we're going to look at some amazing type specimen sheets from the early 1900s and before in the late 1890s and we're going to go ahead and dive right in here what i am super excited about is that this first printed title page claims there are 16 plates all right so 16 type specimen sheets you can see right here and we have all of them and I am super excited because this is dated back to 1909. Some of the plates are obviously before that, but we have all 16 to go through. And we're going to have some bonus sheets in here that are not part of the plates, but they are just bonus surprises for you we will get to later. But let's go ahead and look at this first one, which is the plan for what a manuscript book would be. And we have some instructions here uh, along the left, along with some diagrams that are written and scripted over here on the right everything from your margin and your top spacing bottom spacing everything like that uh, the legend everything so you can see that example here with the original script so now we're going to move on to plate number two and what i like primarily about this is all of the different instruction with the nib illustrations here that are showing you at what angle they are going to be drawn and so this is obviously a very specific nib that they're using here for this aesthetic of penmanship and so you'll notice here that these are very kind of roman or greek in nature again you can see some more illustrations of the nibs here and these are your rustic capitals i'll put these right next to each other so that you can see the difference so what i'm holding on the left is plate two on the right is plate three so the tops are very flat and straight and on this one on the right they are more curved so we're getting a little bit more into the uncial style letters or uncial and so the uncial letters are common script between the fourth and eighth centuries by scribes that were in latin or greece largely now another word you might be familiar with is lombardic style lettering and we're not quite there yet but you can see that these letters are what the later english irish and scottish scripts took inspiration from because as the centuries moved on this kind of script got a lot more complex and flourished so here are the lowercase versions of that and so you can see the difference here between roman and irish is what i was just mentioning and so you have these examples along with a lot of diagrams of how the pen curves are going to be down towards the bottom and so you can see the half and seal modern straight pen you can see all that ex example happening here with the intense flat to straight curve which is it's this really really cool dichotomy of flat versus curved it makes this really really cool effect and so what i like specifically about this is the guides that they're using uh, from 1809, right? I also like that there are variants here along with the connected letters, which just makes makeup of how you might have written it with your actual hand versus how we think about fonts now, which are digital. All right, moving on to the next plate here, you can see more flat tops with some really weird kind of pointed serifs, if you will. But I do like this example here in the middle where there is another nib kind of explaining the structure of a letter. And so these are the versal letters. What versal means Means is basically a drop capital or a large ornate decorate, decorated letter. Now you don't see that specifically here on this sheet or this lowercase version because the versal letters usually were used as one capital ornate letter that you might see at the beginning of a chapter book or a storybook, stuff like that. Now here we have the slanted pen and the small letters and so what that's basically saying is kind of how you would expect. It's basically the angle at which you're holding the pen uh, where you're going to start drawing from that ba or holding it parallel to that baseline you can also see our first entrance of black letter here it was going to be that flat broad pen and moving on to plate seven you can see that again here with the capitals versus the lowercase that we were just looking at and then with the next one here you can see an example of them uh, laid out here basically you have your uh, top uppercase and then the rest of it is in your lowercase which makes it for an absolutely beautiful aesthetic when you're reading something you can just imagine seeing something like this on actual parchment or on a scroll hung on a wall or hanging somewhere it's just and what i really really love about this is the ampersand i think it's absolutely phenomenal all right moving on into the next plate we have these kind of swooped serifs here at the top and so this is much more of your kind of trojan or your roman aesthetic characters now you can see some variety in the s 
and variety in the X here. You have some variants here, and I think that's really nice because that's how you might actually draw them as opposed to something very, very static. Now, we have an example here of a book cover, and so you can see the same type that we were just looking at for this Shakespeare cover, and what I love about this is just kind of expressing how type was able to just speak on its own without any crazy illustration, without any crazy gradients, without any crazy anything on the book cover, right? This is the type is what spoke loudly, and it spoke for itself. And so now we have this Caslin type right here, this reproduction of this beautiful Caslin type. This was actually coming from the original metal cut letters that first appear around the 1722. But this type was extremely popular throughout England. And so you were seeing this utilized a lot as it spread throughout England. And it's really easy to see uh, why, because it's just so, so nice. All right, moving on to our next plate here, we see some more Roman style letters with some variants in kind of that X height here. Uh, very interesting in the formation of the G versus the C. Now here are the original plates that those letters you just saw are kind of based off of so you can see this frame around here this is going to be like a clay plate that this is just a picture of that was scanned in obviously but you can see both the uppercase and the lowercase letters actually pretty decently which i think is pretty amazing for it to be so easily shown and so here we have another example of a super old plate kind of in that Roman area and these are embossed on clay or the plate and so you can see a lot of detail in here this kind of embossed shadowing and stuff that makes some really really cool effects we're going to finish this out with our last plate here for Roman letters and what I think is very interesting about this one is the R right here it almost looks like just doesn't really fit that well but honestly it, it 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 still carries its own it carries its own weight which i think is a particularly interesting way to do that all right so it is time to look at some of our bonus material and so this is a worksheet on roman capital letters you can see that someone was practicing here in pencil over on the left i don't have a date for this so i don't entirely know where this is coming from but what i think is really neat about this is how you can learn the structure of letters especially looking across the top and the o and how that carries across the Q, the C, and the G. Now, this next one I think is the money maker because it is a full italic handwriting worksheet that is showing you the 45 degree pen angle and how you would draw it. So there's little numbers next to the strokes here so that you know how to practice. And I will put this closer for you to see. I mean, just look at how amazing this is. And you can see the date there, 1952. And what's really cool is if you have a nib or a quill or something like this, that you can practice with, you can get a sense for how this works. Now I have a book linked down below on actual copper plate calligraphy if you want to learn, but as you can see here, I'm kind of like fake following the numbers here to show you how you would do it, either one or two or one, two, and three, but feel free to check out that book I linked down below. But it's time to pack these up for now, but I hope you had a ton of fun going through these specimen sheets with me. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I will see you in the next video.